Hi guys, welcome to my 30 days of art video series episode 4. Um, if you stay tuned till the end of the video, I have a very important question I'd like to ask you guys for your input and also a special discount code for my shop. So let's get started with today's materials. I have these Pastel Blick Studio brush markers that I'm addicted to using. <laughs> I also have these Prismacolor color erase pencils. By the way, I'm going to list all the names of the colors in the materials um, in the description below, so don't worry. This Pilot Pocket brush pen, this Uniball Signo white gel pen, which is amazing for highlights, and this lovely white charcoal pencil. <clears throat> so, for today's piece, I started off with a small, quick graphite pencil sketch, and um, I used it as a thumbnail to provide guidance for my larger sketch. Thumbnails are great for planning out the composition and pose um, on a smaller scale so that you don't have to constantly erase or keep redoing areas on your bigger canvas. So for today's topic of discussion, I was really inspired by this video I saw on one of my favorite YouTube channels, which is called The Art Assignment, and the video was about how to critique artwork in the modern internet age. And I thought it was such an interesting topic because I have taken many art classes during college and we would always have peer-to-peer -peer critiques. And it's nothing like the types of critiques I see and end up being a part of online. So I just kind of wanted to share some of my personal experiences and the tips that I have found helpful for me when it comes to critiquing other people's art online. And of course, disclaimer, this is my, my own story, my own preferences, and feel free to take the bits and pieces that you find helpful. Um, you're by no means obligated to follow my advice or even agree with it, but um, based on my experiences in the art classes I've taken in school, peer-to-peer -peer critique often happens um, either in the middle of or at the end of each art assignment where every artist would hang their work up on the wall in front of the classroom and we would talk about our goals for each piece, um, what we wanted to accomplish, the story we're trying to tell, and then we would talk about the areas that we want to be critiqued on. Like, we would say, I really think I would like to improve my composition um, on this piece, that's where I think I struggled the most. Um, please tell me any tips you have on how to make the composition better. Or um, we would say, hey, I really struggled with this aspect. Um, how did you guys do it so well? So in that environment, um, not only is it an environment that's already intended for critique, like everyone is asking for it, everyone's giving critique, and it's a shared network, and you can see other people's art as well. So like if you're critiquing someone else's piece, they can see your piece too. And because of that environment and the pressure of having to present yourself and also talk to someone else face to face, we tended to be a lot more how should I say it, like eloquent and socially graceful. Um, we sympathize a lot with our fellow art students and we genuinely wanted to give helpful comments and we already knew the goals and um, the prompts they had in mind. So we gave critique in the areas that they wanted critique in. So if someone like loved painting superheroes and <laughs> only painted superheroes and they want to critique on how can they make their anatomy better. That's the type of critique we would all give. No one would pop in and say, you should paint more than just superheroes, man. Like, you should really expand your subjects. Like, this is getting kind of boring. Like, nobody would talk like that. And I feel like online, because we don't have that in-flesh, face-to-face interaction, we tend to not sympathize as much with the person we're talking to so it's easy for us to say a comment very bluntly that might end up rubbing the artist the wrong way and also we don't really know the areas that the artist wants critique on because most of the time when people share artwork they're not prompting you to critique them they genuinely just wanted to share their work because they spent a lot of time on it and they want the work to be seen so for me personally i err on the side of safety i try to only say 
the nice critiques, the parts I liked, the parts that worked. And um, just because I'm that kind of person, I want to make someone feel better. I want to compliment them. I don't want to accidentally offend anyone. So why would I take the risk and say something, you know, <laughs> say something that's crit criticism, but also could be taken the wrong way. Like, even if you phrase it in the nicest way possible, like, I'm trying to help you, this is constructive, um, you never know who's sitting on the other side of your computer screen. They might be really offended, or they might be hurt, or they might be like a really young artist, you know, who, <laughs> who is really offended by what you said. So, yeah, personally, I like to share the positive comments with the artist and brighten their day. And then I like to keep the negative comments to myself. Not that I don't look at all artwork, um, good and bad. Like, I try to pick out the parts of each piece I see that I like and try to keep it for inspiration and share it. And then I pick out the parts I don't like, but I do it silently. I take a note of it and I learn from other people's mistakes as well as my own and um, the great part of learning how to critique other people's art is learning how to view art with a constructive eye and I think especially if you're also an artist this is very helpful because like I said you can learn from someone else's mistakes um, in some ways like viewing other people's art is like con uh, conducting experiments on color choices conducting conducting experiments on composition and posing and anything and you can utilize someone else's piece as a way to supplement your own artistic growth but yeah like sharing the constructive criticism publicly usually I don't like to do it unless someone asks like I actually have a lot of people messaging me asking me how they can improve on a piece and what advice I have on how they can finish a piece and in those cases if someone's asking you for critique um, you still have to be careful you still have to be graceful um, what I like to do is ask them what they wanted to accomplish um, if someone says what should I do for the background I will ask them well what are you thinking like what types of feelings do you want the viewer to see with your background or like are you trying to use the background as a way to bring out and highlight your subject or do you want your background to have a cool atmospheric feel like I will ask them questions first and usually they will tell me the type of story they want to tell or the goal they want for whatever the whatever part of their art they want critique in and then I will I will weave my critique around the goal that they want to accomplish. So I will say, okay, well, if you're looking for, you know, a cool atmospheric background, I suggest using these colors. I suggest using this technique. Um, yeah, so I think when someone's asking you for critique, also ask them to kind of clarify exactly what they're trying to accomplish and then focus your critique on addressing their actual goals. Okay, Woo! I ramble so much. Thank you guys for staying with me for so long. Um, I hope you found this useful. Let me know if there are any topics of discussion you would like me to talk about next time. Let me know how you have, or let me know your experiences with critiquing other people's artwork or having your own artwork critique. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And um, oh yeah, the big question I had for you guys, I really want your input. I'm thinking at the end of this, um, making all of these pieces into a mini art book, probably a soft cover and probably not too large, maybe like, you know, l less than eight by 10 in size or around eight by 10. Would you guys be interested in purchasing a book like that, collecting all of these um, 30 days of art illustrations? And if so, um, what do you think you'd be comfortable paying? I'm really curious because I've been approached by some bookmaking companies to make some books and I think that would be a really cute, <laughs> cute idea. So yeah, let me know if you'd be interested and how much you'd like to pay for it. And also, um, as a thank you for watching this video, I'd like to give you 10% off of my store. You can apply it to any product, including this illustration. And um, thank you all so much for watching. I will catch you in episode five. Bye.